Hello, Dr. Rasan. Okay, now without any further ado, we'll turn talk. Now. Good morning. I was just trying to find the bond for a mute. Yes, one. Go ahead. Hello. Can you hear me now? I can hear you perfectly fine. Yeah, so uh, now let's welcome Dr. Kasim Tarabin, neurologist and neurosurgeon USA, to present on the topic update on bra brain anism intuitions. Yes, doctor, you can share your screen and start a presentation. Okay, ma'am, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Uh, it is uh, still dark here in the United States. Uh, it's about uh, 5.24 a.m. in the morning. I uh, just finished my breakfast and uh, ready to go. Uh, assume that now it's uh, noon time in London. Uh, I'm gonna share the screen first and uh, start talking about a very exciting topic that you would probably enjoy and I hope you do. Uh, it's about the management of um, uh, brain aneurysm or bleeding bleeding brain aneurysm rather so uh, without further ado uh, this is a topic about uh, <coughs> excuse me aneurysm repair and I'm not sure how many of you guys are very well versed in aneurysms uh, so I would uh, tell you that <coughs> First of all, a little introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Ghassan Tarabin, and I'm a board-certified neurologist and a neurosurgeon in the United States. Currently, I run a uh, center for stem cells, and also I have developed recently a new device to repair the aneurysm without surgery, and that probably is what I'll be talking about by the end of this lecture. Before we start, uh, I'd like just to kind of get a little uh, basic in the uh, uh, reminder of what is an artery and what is a vein. And then we'll talk about what is an aneurysm. An artery on the left hand side right here is a rounded elastic wall uh, structure that holds in the lumen blood. And uh, this elasticity maintains the blood pressure that we need to uh, supply and provide the blood everywhere in the body. So it doesn't have much of uh, uh, muscle fibers. Unlike the vein that doesn't have as many as elastic uh, fibers here, but it has a lot of muscle fibers. So if a rupture happens in the artery for whatever reason, like an accident or whatever, that will bleed to death unless we compress it or so we surgically repair it. This will not because these, this, these uh, mus uh, muscle fibers, they will contract the uh, vein and try to close it out. So every time you go to the doctor and they draw some blood from you, they use that guy on the right, not that guy on the left. And a little pressure with uh, a band-aid is enough to stop the bleed. This one in here, we use to pass a catheter, go to the heart or to the brain, and it really is a cumbersome to stop its bleeding. Here it comes now uh, the dilemma. Whenever there is an absence of a segment of this structure in here, this artery starts to bulge, bulge, expand, and expand and that is the whole mark of what's called an aneurysm. An aneurysm people most of the time 90% of it is discovered coincidentally. Sadly if it ever ruptures it's fatal no matter where it is. It is far more fatal in the brain than other places. A lot of people I know personally and there are, some of them are actually famous where they were healthy 49 years old arc jug litter uh, just pass on the floor and it turned out to be an aneurysm in his aorta and it blew up whenever that blows up people it sends people into unconsciousness within seconds and death within 
two, three minutes at the most. It's a good way to die, honestly, because there is no suffering, there is nothing, but it is a sad loss because it is something that, as you will see, is or could be prevented. Could be prevented. Two types of aneurysms, one on the right here is a fusiform where it really becomes like a, a lentil type kind of, you know, uh, structure and a saccular that has far more tendency to blow up and bleed. If it ever blows up, no matter where it is, it cannot be stopped unless surgically we get in and close it. That was how it used to be. Nowadays, I mean, and what uh, my invention is all about is we are changing that, uh, the, 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 uh, the laws, definitely. So, the aneurysm usually is asymptomatic. People are healthy. There's nothing wrong with them. And suddenly, they just kind of, you know, go into unconsciousness. In the brain aneurysm, it depends on the amount of rupture. Many people, they grow these aneurysms inside the brain and they become they are completely asymptomatic. There's no symptom of whatsoever. Suddenly, either the small one or the big one blows up. It gives what people describe as the worst headache of my life. That's what the patient will tell you in the ER. I heard it over and over and over from so many people. The most common complaint is, God, God, Doc, I have the worst headache of my life. If somebody doesn't have headache, or he has headaches but not as bad, and then sudden onset of severe headache of one's life comes to the ER, I would assume that this is a brain aneurysm blow up unless proven otherwise because I have a lot to lose by not assuming that and I have nothing to lose if I assume that and t I, I turn to be wrong and I hope that I'm wrong but mostly 90% of the times I was right and that's sad part definitely. What are the risk factors? Uh, they don't happen from bad luck. Well, sometimes they do but occasionally actually. Uh, the risk factors that we identified so far, smoking is a risk factor. High blood pressure is a risk factor. Uh, other things that is in the medical history, like alcohol, binge drinking, drug abuse, especially cocaine, amphetamine. And also, somebody has family history. I have two sisters. They both have brain aneurysms, and it, there, there seems to be some genetic factor. Not all of it, but there are some genetic factors, of course. Uh, when it ruptures, people go on the ground and or just kind of you know hold their head, you know, and because it is like a sudden onset of brain bleed where the aneurysm is, and that is enough really to get anybody's attention ahead to the ER. I don't know of anybody that has a brain aneurysm bled or ruptured, and he stayed home saying that, Oh, I will wait a little bit till I see what happens. And I don't remember anybody has that attitude at all. What are the uh, game plan for uh, aneurysms nowadays? It's the worst headache of the life. As soon as you head to the ER, if the ER doctor is smart enough to know that this could be an aneurysm, then he will run a CT with angiogram. Actually, not only CT, CT with angio. CT by itself it could capture 80% of it. However, the uh, it becomes up to 95, 96% if you add a dye and see the leak and you will see where you know the aneurysm is. And let's say that we did that and it's still negative. I wouldn't let people go home. I would go a spinal tap, meaning that you know I would stick a needle in the back and take a sample of this fluid that circulates around the brain. And if I see blood, then that's, a, that's an aneurysm, blew up. What happens, they call the neurosurgeon, which is myself, and we set up, has, that's how it used to be, a uh, surgery for an aneurysm clip. We either clip it or coil it. And these are two distinct procedures and it might take like two to three days till everything is set and done. So really the time for intervention here typically is the fastest we ever had is one day and the um, uh, it could take sometimes three to four days depends on what which center you're in to set up that major surgery where you can get go in and clip the aneurysm. 
what are the natural profile of uh, aneurysm? Let's say that all aneurysms, what happens to them if we do nothing? One third, they will die within one to three days. One third. One third, one out of three people who have a brain aneurysm blew up, they will die within one to three days, no matter what you do. Now, now that's the rule, that's the data of today. And then the other third will die within one to five weeks. The remaining, only 10% today will survive without any uh, problem, but the rest, they will have some major deficit, major deficit, neurological deficit, being uh, losing ability to walk or to speak or to think clearly. So really we're talking about a devastating entity, very devastating. And it is all time related to intervention. If we capture and repair that aneurysm early on, we could avert death and we could avert a lot of disabilities that nowadays is extremely prevalent uh, in my experience. This is the aneurysm manager, this is the invention that I had, which is pretty much a catheter is introduced through a peripheral artery. So the moment I see a patient in the ER saying that he, ha he or she had the worst headache of, of their life, I would right away insert a catheter through the artery in the preferably in the radial artery and then they will just steer it go all the way up to the brain and then inject the dye look at where the rupture is if i don't see anything i'll pull the catheter and i send the patient home and say hey th this is not an aneurysm but 90 some percent of the times with a clinical diagnosis of aneurysm you're going to see the rupture so let's say that we saw the rupture the stint we deploy it by a balloon and it has, it has a little silicone sleeve and I will show you in a minute how it is done and uh, uh, this will close the site and patch the hole where the leak is within less than an hour meaning that barely <coughs> <coughs> excuse me that's my coffee uh, barely will have uh, only few cc's uh, leaked to the brain and that's not enough to cause much of anything really. This is the device and this is the stent and this is the balloon that through which we deploy it and this is here the artery and this is my calf and it has that sleeve here and it opens up like an umbrella and then it pushes on the side to the side that sleeve and uh, that is going to close the hole and then after that I pull that out to leave the artery open and the whole procedure should not take more than an hour to do. Actually the uh, device has a patent and uh, 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 the, uh, if you go to uh, uh, Google Patents and only type my name you're gonna see it there and pretty much here's Google Patent and then you to do terrapin and you're gonna see all of my devices that they have been patented by the US and this is the brain aneurysm manager the United States granted a patent for this invention and uh, the inventor is me right here and this is really for those who are interested they could read about that invention uh, we're hoping to pass it through the FDA and put it in the hands of surgeons very shortly probably by June or July I'm hoping and I'm praying depending on how fast these people they would uh, move and for those who are interested uh, the whole invention is online and that tells you pretty much what does it do and what are the details of that invention and here is the picture that I just showed you in a minute and uh, so in uh, closing uh, the uh, brain aneurysm uh, so far is fatal uh, but it doesn't have to be so uh, the uh, 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 we're changing actually as I said the uh, the, 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 the laws were changing everything, we're changing uh, the, 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 the natural profile of this entity 
and I'm praying that we could get this in action very soon and with that I will close uh, to for those who have any question any questions for Dr. Gaza any questions from delegate side Uh, all right, if you have any questions, you can drop them in the chat box. So that was a wonderful presentation, Dr. Klaas and Tarabin, um, on your talk update on brain inventions. Thank you so much. Thanks for attending this webinar. Hope we see you all in next webinar and conferences. Thank you. Yeah, oh, you're welcome. You have a great day, guys. You take care. Yeah, so, so great. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you being here. And uh, we will be providing you with the e-certificates within a week or two. Thank you so, so much. So thanks again for joining. Yeah, yes, thanks again for joining us today. I especially thank all the speakers who have been participated today. Uh, Dr. Lakmali Anthony from Australia and uh, Mr. Sushanta Paudel uh, from Nepal. And then Ms. Deepa Khanil Nepal and last but not least Gazan Tarban from USA thanks for having you all here hope to see you all in the next webinars now you can exit the meeting thank you you take care bye bye yeah bye bye thank you